let us now look at a test where we are looking at the difference between means so to understand the context let's say that we are looking at two stock markets the Karachi stock exchange and the Lahore stock exchange and we have a view about the mean of Karachi stock exchange and mu2 which represents the mean of the stocks in the uh, Lahore stock exchange so our hypothesis might be for example that mu1 is equal to mu0 that's the null versus the alternate that the returns are not the same actually mu1 is equal to mu2 uh, versus the alternate that mu1 is not equal to mu2 now there are two possible situations one is where we assume equal variance so we assume that the variance of returns in Karachi is equal to the variance of returns in Lahore versus another situation where we assume that the variances are not the same the general assumptions that apply to both test 1 and test 2 are that the samples that we draw from both the populations are independent both populations are normally distributed and the variance is unknown so variance unknown does not necessarily conflict with equal variance because you can say that the variance of both populations is not known but you can still make an assumption that the variance is equal so when populations take test one now so we are talking about test one when populations are normally distributed and the population variances are assumed to be equal so that's test one use a pooled variance so essentially what we are doing is we are coming up with a test statistic so just to illustrate how we come up with this test statistic so let's say that this is the sample that you drew from Karachi and this is the sample that you drew from Lahore so say for example that you drew a sample of 25 in Karachi and since Lahore is smaller you have a smaller sample there of say 20 now x1 represents the mean values of the returns from Karachi in terms of uh, the sample and x2 bar is the mean that you get out of the sample that you drew in Lahore and so that's this x x1 bar minus x2 minus mu1 minus mu2 so if in our example we had set up the hypothesis such that mu1 is equal to mu2 then mu1 minus mu2 so this becomes 0 sp squared is since we are assuming equal variances we basically pool pool these two samples and calculate the so we have uh, we have 45 data points so for those 45 data points we calculate the variance so simply plug into a calculator or plug into a computer these 25 numbers and calculate the variance so sp1 sp2 squared divided by n1 which in my example is 25 and in 2 which in my example is 20 so based on this calculation we come up with a t statistic and let's say that the t statistic that we come up with is 3.5 so i'm just making up that number it's highly unlikely that you will be expected to come up with to do to do this calculation on the exam because it takes a long time but you should still understand all the variables the degrees of freedom is n1 plus n2 minus 2 so degrees of freedom here is equal to 25 plus 20 which is 45 minus 2 which is 43 now how does this work this works like the simple tests that we've talked about earlier 
you've calculated your test statistic as 3.5 if you are operating at a 5% level of significance what you will do is you will look at your t table you will assume uh, so given this 5% level of significance and degrees of freedom equal to 43 you will come up with your critical values so I am not sure what those critical values are but let's say that they are approximately minus 2 and plus 2 so these are your critical values you compare the test statistic with the critical values and if you fall outside or if you fall in this region or this region then you reject the null hypothesis and if you are in this region over here then you fail to reject the null hypothesis so this works exactly the way the simpler tests that we talked about earlier the way they worked what if uh, what if we have unequal variance what does this mean this means that in the Karachi data and Lahore data we have different variances so so what this means is you draw your samples and in the samples so this was the Karachi stock exchange data Lahore stock exchange data these are your samples so you drew x1 and you came up with some number x2 was some number but here the standard deviation or the variance for this sample is different from so we'll call this s1 squared and we'll call this s2 squared because in in this test 2 we are assuming that the variances for Karachi and Lahore are different so for each sample that we draw we need to calculate the variances separately and they are labeled s1 squared and s2 squared so the t statistic formula the test statistic formula becomes slightly different this part is the same x1 bar minus x2 bar calculated from here and here minus mu1 minus mu2 which is zero if if our null hypothesis is that mu1 is equal to mu2 and notice this is the different part relative to the earlier test here we explicitly use s1 squared which is the variance for this sample and s2 squared which is the variance for this sample so 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 this is your situation with uh, so as before you come up with your test stat and compare with uh, with your um, so compare the test statistic with the uh, critical values a paired comparisons test so paired comparison test is concerned with the mean of the differences between paired comparisons of two dependent normally distributed samples so to understand this let's say that you are comparing the returns of Ford and General Motors and you collect data for the last 20 months so one month ago Ford had a return of 1% GM had a return of 2% two months ago Ford had a return of 2% GM had a return of let's say 0% three months ago and so on so let's say we do this for 20 months when we talk about a paired comparison what we need to do is come up with the difference between the two returns so Ford minus GM is so the difference for last month is minus one then 2 minus 0 is 2 and so on so what we are actually going to focus on is the difference column so this is what we mean by the the differences between paired observations so these are the paired observations and this represents the difference between the paired observations so here you might come up with a null hypothesis that the difference between the paired observations uh, is uh, equal to zero so that's represented by u dz is equal to zero versus a null hypothesis that mu dz is not equal to zero so this is your hypothesis 
how do you come up with the test statistic here the test statistic is equal to d bar so d bar is simply the average of all these values that you found in your sample of the last 20 months worth of data minus mu dz so if you assume or if your null hypothesis says that the difference between the two returns is zero then this becomes zero divided by s d bar s d bar is equal to the standard deviation of the differences so the standard deviation of these differences divided by root n which in my example is 20 so you calculate s d bar plug that over here and this gives you the t statistic and just to just to state the obvious over here once you get the t statistic again you compare the t statistic with critical values critical values you get based on the significance level and then you can decide whether to reject the null hypothesis or not to reject the null hypothesis so that's exactly like what we have done before the chi-squared test is used for variances of a normally distributed population so take the Karachi stock exchange again and now let's say that we are past means and now we want to create a, we have a hypothesis about the variance so for example you might have a hypothesis that the variance of the Karachi stock exchange uh, stock returns is not 10 percent so the way you would set that up then is mu naught sigma squared is equal to 10 percent or actually uh, it's not equal to 100 so this is how you would set it up so variance not equal to 100 this is a two-tailed test it's more likely that you would be doing a, uh, if you are doing a one-tailed test and you believe that the standard deviation is greater than 10 percent or the variance is greater than 100 the way you would set that up is mu naught sigma squared is less than equal to 100 versus the alternate hypothesis that sigma squared is greater than 100 so the alternate hypothesis is what you are after now this is your hypothesis how do you come up with the test statistic so you draw out your sample you need to come up with what's called the chi squared statistic so the chi squared statistic would be n minus s1 so let's say you draw a sample of 30 so this would be 30 minus 1 into s squared s squared is the variance of this sample divided by sigma naught squared which in our example is 100 so based on this you can come up with a uh, with a chi squared test statistic what do you do with that you compare the chi squared test statistic with the critical values to come up with the critical values you need to know how to read the chi-squared table and understand the chi-squared distribution the chi-squared distribution looks something like this which is bounded by zero because we are talking about variances variances can't be negative so so obviously this graph is bounded by zero on the left and it has a right skew which you can see over here assuming a 5% significance we are basically then saying that 95% area is over here and we have 2.5% in the left tail and 2.5% in the right tail now how do we come up with the critical values the critical values depend on the degrees of freedom so the degrees of freedom here let's say that we are dealing with a situation where the degrees of freedom is equal to 30 so with 30 degrees of freedom how do you come up with with this value so notice that the area so basically in this case 0 0.975 
represents the area to the to the right of this point so from here to the right the area is 97.5 percent or in decimal 0.975 so you read that off the top row this is the degrees of freedom this is the area to the right and that gives you a value of 16.791 so that's this value over here to come up with this value you look at the probability 0 0.025 this is the area to the right over here and 30 degrees of freedom gives you a critical value of 46.979 then you compare the so these are the critical values you compare these with the chi-squared statistic and if the chi-squared stack falls in this region then you fail to reject the null hypothesis if you are in this region or this region then you can reject the null hypothesis so works exactly like before let's talk about the F test with the F test we test the equality of the variance of two normally distributed populations samples must be independent so continuing with the sort of example that we have been talking about so let's say we have the Karachi stock exchange data and the Lahore stock exchange data and we want to compare the variances so let's say that we believe that the variances are different so if we believe the variances are different we'll set up the null hypothesis like this the variance for Karachi represented by sigma 1 squared so H naught is sigma 1 squared equals sigma 2 squared versus a null hypothesis that sigma 1 squared is not equal to sigma 2 squared so that's your hypothesis for both Karachi and Lahore you draw your samples and the way you calculate the F statistic now it will be the the variance for this sample versus the variance for the Lahore sample the degrees of freedom important for an F test there are two different degrees of freedom n1 minus 1 so n1 minus 1 for here and n2 which is this sample size minus 1 for the Lahore data and when you calculate the F statistic always you should have the larger sample variance in the numerator so that our F stat is greater than 1 so based on all this you calculate your F stat let's say that you calculate your F stat equal to 90 for example based on this information okay now the graph illustrates so this is what an F distribution looks like again notice that since we are dealing with variances it's bounded by 0 and it is somewhat right skewed so this graph illustrates uh, F distribution at the 5% level of significance if you look at uh, F tables you will notice that for each table uh, each table is specified for a given level of significance so right on top you will see something like F table with 5% probability in the upper tail so that would mean something like this now how do you as, as I mentioned earlier with F tests there are two degrees of freedom typically the degrees of freedom in the numerator are given up here so this would be degrees of freedom in the numerator and on the first column you would see the degrees of freedom in the denominator so if we have 10 degrees of freedom in the denominator and 10 degrees of freedom in the numerator then the critical value is 2.98 so that represents this value over here now if our test statistic calculated on the previous slide falls to the right so in this area then we reject the null hypothesis and if we fall in this region then we fail to reject the null hypothesis